Bienvenidos, Usham Deed, and welcome to another Netacad Introduction to Python course supplemental video tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over lab 3.1.2.15, where we're going to be taking a look at Kalatz's hypothesis. Now, I have to be honest here, before running into this lab back when this course was being beta tested, uh, I had no idea who this individual was. And so if we were to come up here, uh, this is Lothar Kalatz, and you can see he actually just passed away uh, not too long ago, about 30 years ago, uh, but was a mathematician, a German mathematician, and he had this theorem, so to speak, and so let's go ahead and take a look here or hypothesis, I should say, uh, that we're going to convert into Python code. So it looks like this still remains unproven. Uh, and so here is what is unproven. So you can take any, and these are the sort of the keys that we need to focus in on here, any non-negative and non-zero integer number. And so in other words, what we're going to be looking for is a number greater than zero. So if something is greater than zero, or if I say something, if the user input is greater than zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if it's even. So the first check is to see if it's greater than zero, is it even? And if it is even, we're going to go ahead and evaluate a new C0. And in other words, we're going to assign the value to C0 as C0 divided by two. Now remember, this is where we're also going to have to talk about integer division or floor division and floating point division. Remember from early on in the course, we were looking at whether we would use a single forward slash, <clears throat> excuse me, or two forward slashes. And here we're going to use two. Now, uh, if it says otherwise, right? So if it's an even number, else if it's an odd number, we're going to evaluate it uh, to C0. Uh, and we're going to, again, just basically C0 equal, and we're going to set it to that right there. Uh, and if C0 is not equal to 1, then what we're going to do is we're going to skip back to point number 2. And what that means is we're going to be in a while loop here, right? And again, so we're going to be checking to see while something is um, not equal to, well, why, while C0 is not equal to 1, that's what we're going to be checking for. And then the ifs, <clears throat> excuse me, the ifs that we're going to be using are to check and see, is it an even number or is it an odd number? And again, it's a very complex hypothesis that he has uh, and how you would figure out whether or not it will always go to 1, but the code is actually going to be very, very straightforward. So here are the test data that we're going to be using. You can see if you were to put 15 in, which is an odd number, uh, then it's going to start doing some of these um, the equations that we're going to be working on, and it should take 17 steps. Oh, and it did it say, yes, uh, write a program that reads one natural number. So again, positive number greater than zero uh, and executes the above steps as long as C0 remains different from one. So while C0 is not equal to 1, we're going to check to see if C0 is an even number or is it an odd number. And we're going to do those operations based on that. Again, I'm kind of reading through here. So hint, the most important part of the problem is how to transform Kalatz's idea into a while loop. Uh, and again, here is what that output would look like if we entered in 17 or 16 or 1023. Uh, and it looks pretty good. It looks like it always works its way down to the number one. So it's pretty, pretty, oops, sorry, I went a little too far there. So it's a pretty cool little equation. So let's go ahead and dive in now into the integrated development learning environment or Python's idle. 
and let's pull that up here and you can see that we are ready to go so we have to keep track of the number of steps right so we're going to go ahead and just like we did in the previous video building the pyramids where we sort of instantiated or seeded a an integer i'm sorry integer uh a, a variable with a value we're going to do the exact same here same thing here so we're going to set steps equal to zero because when we start we haven't executed anything yet all right well let's go ahead now and let's get that user input so c0 is going to be and here's where we're again going to see the explicit type conversion the type casting from the default of the input function which is a string that's what it's going to return to us we're going to type cast it explicit type conversion changing it from a string data type to an integer because again we're going to be testing uh, to see if it is a let's go ahead and say please enter a positive uh, integer and again we'll check to see if they don't enter a positive integer as well or we'll have a condition in here uh, to check that so we've got the step set to zero c0 is going to say please enter a positive integer uh, and actually let me go ahead and I'll add something else in here greater then zero that way there's no confusion as to whether zero uh, would be considered a positive or negative integer because we don't want zero it's got to be greater than uh greater than it can't yeah it, it can't be less than one so it's got to be greater uh than zero and so here's what we're going to do so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into the while loop so while c0 is not equal to one remember that is the test uh, that we're going to be doing and the value for c0 is going to be whatever the user enters in so as long as it is not equal to one right we're going to go ahead and let's say uh, if c0 and we've done this multiple times right how would we check to see if a number is even or odd and this is the modulo function right so if c0 modulo 2 is equal to 0 meaning if c2 is an even number and so let's go back here and look right so take any non-negative and non-zero integer number and name it c0 if it's even evaluate the new c0 as c0 divided by 2 so let's go ahead and say uh, c0 <clears throat> uh, and we'll do it this way we'll do forward slash forward slash we're going to do floor division uh, because looking at the test data they don't want floating point division that's not what they're looking for they're actually looking for integer division so we'll say c0 forward slash forward slash right that's that integer division instead of the single forward slash uh, equal equal two and that is what we're going to do there now if it's not an even number whoops sorry uh we'll go ahead and say um let's see here because i'm thinking about how we're going to handle the non-negatives because what i would do is this right here is say um, if it's even number else right so if it's not even then it has to be an odd number so let's say uh, c0 and we're going to assign that and this one's a little more complicated here but very straightforward still it's going to be three times c0 plus one so c0 is going to be assigned c0 uh, oops sorry not c0 what did i say three times c0 plus one and so that is how we would define that and then finally we're going to want to come down here and we're going to say print and so then here we would print out uh, what the value of c0 actually is at this point right so if uh, it's an even number which is what that is testing for we're going to reassign the value to c uh, of c0 to c0 divided by 2 else it's an odd number and we're going to assign the value of c0 to be three times c0 plus one and then here's where we're going to print out what that value is now remember the while loop is going to run and run and run until the c0 value is down to one and then let's go ahead and do this i'm going to say steps 
and we'll increment the steps, right? So that would be uh, the first step. We're printing those values out. We're gonna increment the number of steps. And then finally, let's go ahead down here with one last print statement. And we'll just simply say the total number of steps used was, and we'll say steps. And so that should wrap it up. Now, again, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, uh, what if a negative number uh, is entered in here? And what we might need, and we could probably handle it in the while loop, if a user entered in a negative number, uh, or a number, I should say, less than, less than, um, one. If C0 was to be less than one, let's do this and let's see how this looks. So we're going to say if C0 is less than one, right? Because again, we're saying enter a positive integer greater than zero. So if it's less than one, uh, we would basically go ahead. We're going to want to get out of this loop and um, I'm going to throw a break in here. We're going to break right out of the loop. Okay, so while C0 is not equal to 1, which means they could enter in a negative number, but if that number is less than 1, that's it. We're done. We're breaking out. And maybe even a quick statement here prior to the break may be of use. Uh, remember, your value entered needs to be greater than zero, oops, sorry, zero. And let's give ourselves just a little bit more real estate here. Greater than zero through three. We'll throw an exclamation mark, uh, some exclamation marks in there. And then we're going to break out. So first we're gonna check to see if C zero is less than one, right? And if it is, we're gonna break out, program's over. Else if, we're gonna check to see if it's even, then we're going to check to see if, uh, again, we're not checking to see if it's odd. We're going to check to see if it's even. And if it's not even, then it's implied, right? Like that deny any at the end of all the ACLs. It's implied that it's going to be an odd number. And so then we take this step here. And let me put a space in there. I kind of like that. All right. Well, I think we've got a working program here. Let's go ahead, hit F5. Let's save this off and let's see what we get here. So please enter a positive integer greater than zero. Well, I'm gonna enter in negative 99. And so uh, we should simply see that, yeah, that's it, right? Remember the value entered needs to be greater than zero. So we handled the case of the negative number. The total number of steps used was zero because we didn't go through any of the steps, right? We didn't enter in the right uh, input. So let's hit F5 and let's rerun this again. And actually let's pull back up some of that test data over here. So let's enter in 15 and it should take 17 steps. And let's see what that looks like. And there it is, 46, 23, 70. Uh, and so Collatz's hypothesis works there and we get the expected output. Let's take a look at 16, uh, which is definitely more straightforward in terms of number of steps. We should have four and there it is right there, right? An even number divide by two. And then an even number divide by two, divide by two, and we get down to one. And if you think about it, that makes sense, right? Because any even number, as you continue to divide it by two, ultimately, you're going to get down to two. And then you're going to end up when you divide two by two, you're going to get one. So when the program hits one, that's it. We're done. All right, let's run this one more time. Let's go ahead and say uh, F5 there to get this to rerun. And what are we doing? 1,023. All right, 1,023. And definitely more steps, but you can see as soon as we get down here uh, to the last of the 62, was that 62? Let's take a quick check here. And that was 62 steps. And so there is all the code that's gonna be required and we did it all in a single while loop. We tested for the negative condition, is it less than one? Um, we've tested for even numbers. We test, and I should keep saying we tested for odd numbers, but we tested for even numbers and we know that if it's not even, it's gonna be odd. We then printed out what that number is going to be, the C0 variable with the 
print C0 statement, and then we incremented the number of steps so we can keep track. So now the last thing I'm gonna do is let's get crazy here. Uh, let's go ahead and run this program, and I'm gonna type in a few nines. And let's see how quickly this can be figured out. And again, I think it's interesting that this hypothesis has not been proven yet. And you can see right there, 169 steps, and that was a pretty big number. But I guess as you get closer to infinity, it probably gets into that math where I started not paying attention in high school. And so who knows You know whether this is gonna work for any number, right? Any positive integer greater than zero. All right. Well, I'm really hoping that this made sense, that my explanation was clear, that you get all of this packed into a single while loop with an if, el, if, else, uh, where we check everything out, we increment the steps, we print out the value as it's being changed, and then we give you the total number of steps at the end of the program. All right, well, that is going to do it for lab 3.1.2.15, where we took a look at Kalatz's hypothesis, learned a little bit about math and a little bit about Mr. Kalatz. All right, best of luck to you in your studies. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the next video.